senior minister, and it's my <laughs> honor to be here with you this morning. I just came back from a week at a Silomar, and you know, <laughs> need I say more? It's just a wonderful <laughs> experience. It's good to be back, and, but it was good to be gone. <laughs> well, we're going to do what we do every Sunday, and that's recite our vision mission statement, and it's up on the screen behind me, and it says, we are an open, loving, spiritual community dedicated to evolving consciousness through teaching spiritual principles. I know you have a lot of different places you could be this morning, but you found yourself here. You made it. This is the place to be. And we're going to start with uh, giving out some certificates. And we're going to start doing this on a regular basis because we have so many certificates to give out. So I'd like to first invite Paula up to give the certificates for the Essential Earnest Homes class that was completed about a month ago. Go ahead. Thank you. And my beautiful and assistant, yes, her Janice. Assistant, uh, <laughs> Janice Garibay, uh, so won't you go ahead? Oh, uh, please come on up when I call your name, Shirley Bayax. I just want to say something. These students were dedicated to exploring Ernest Holmes and what he meant to this whole movement. And we had wonderful discussions that I'm so grateful for our class. They inspire me. Thank you, Shirley. Janice Garibay. Yeah. Um, and I don't see Sam, but Samantha. Oh, there she is. Yay. Samantha Hall. Thank you, Sam. And Jessica Heffley is not here today. She's gone. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jim Cash. Come on No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Thank you. And Nicole Brown, not here, not here, but yay, Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Now we had a another class that Deborah Purdue taught, and I'm going to invite Deborah up to give these certificates away. This was the. Uh, oh, okay. Let's see what it was. This class was not an accredited class, but a personal enrichment class called Spiritual Growth. We studied Samaya Roman's book, and it was quite amazing. And so um, I noticed, you know, it's summer, so quite a few people aren't here, but I see a few that are. So we got Roy Hewson, who I think is not here. Let's give him a hand. Reagan. And I don't see her. <laughs> Lori Levine. You want to come over here, baby? Or should I move? Oh, okay. We'll take it in the other one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Chancey Stanley, he's not here, but this is also on vacation. Thank you. 
<laughs> and Richard Reagan, and he's not here. Deborah, and we have some announcements today. Now, uh, first, I want to start off with um, we made a donation to the Josephine County Food Bank. Uh, we gave twenty-five dollars cash and twenty-three pounds of product. Woo! It, it helps somebody who is is going to those food pantries. So let's keep that flowing in. And now we'll get to the rest of our announcements. First one is, would you like to become a GPCSL member? There are uh, applications in your seat backs if you'd like to fill one of those out. And you can either give it to me or another board member or put it in the suggestion box and we'll get it picked up. You also get a free six month digital subscription to Science of Mind magazine when you become a member. Um, there are other perks too to becoming a member. Uh, save the date. Grab your August Science of Mind magazine. They aren't here yet, but they are on their way here. And when they do get here, our own Deborah Purdue has an article in August on page 100. So You uh, again, if you're a new member, you get six month subscription to that. So that's a mind magazine digitally. Okay, next one. Uh, metaphysical book study continues uh, Sunday mornings from 9 to 9 45. We're just getting to the end of our Living the Science of Mind by Dr. Ernest Holmes. And I think that we have a consensus that we're going to start studying the Science of Mind textbook. Yeah. So, <laughs> If you ever wanted to figure that out and have a discussion about it, it will all be revealed as this. So please <laughs> come from 9 to 9 45 and unravel the threads of the universe with us. <laughs> and meditation group continues 15 minutes from 9 50 to 10 05, uh, held right here in the conference room. So please uh, come join us in the mornings before this service. We have all sorts of stuff going on. And it, did I miss any other announcements? Uh, hey, yes. The spiritual gardeners will meet next week after the service. So please stay if you have any um, awesome. time and effort to get yes, to our yard. Yes, if you are a gardener or would like to be one, or would just like to help us around with stuff because we do need some assistance with our building and grounds. Um, please show up next week after the service so that we can talk and get organized. And, um, you know, I just moved those beautiful tables that we got donated out of the shed so that we can get to the lawnmower, so that we can get to the tents for the funny bear. It's like so much going on. But. That's just how it is when you're an active center. Yes. Are yeah. always moving. Yes. I just want to let everybody know I put a uh, note, note card in all the back of the seats in case anybody wants to take notes. Okay, yeah, we now have a note card huh? and a pen in the back of every seat back. If you have, or maybe you want to jot down a question and put it in the suggestion box or whatever you want to do. If you want to take something home with you, you have that. So. I think that completes our announcements for the morning. Uh, once again, Michael Mandrell is um, uh, assisting with the musical um, and, and joined our, our lovely Laura. Uh, uh, Lauren um, has graciously uh, sharing the stage with Mark. When I went to a seminar this last week, I, I I pulled a little bit with me. <laughs> Michael, Michael, Michael followed me home. So we have a little extra added um, beauty in our music this morning. Not that Lauren isn't enough, but when he said he was available and passing through, I was like, we can have all sorts of music. It's all good. So, um, but thank you for being here this morning. And let's stand as Lauren uh, leads us as we say, we are one. Oh, 
morning. My name is Jamaica Wallace, and I am your practitioner for today. Can you please join me in reading today's gratitude? How thankful I am to be and voice, and so it is. Licensed practitioners are the healing arm of our center. <coughs> we are deeply committed to the philosophy and must study for several years to earn our certification. We are here to pray with you and for you. To fill out a prayer request, use the yellow form in the seat back in front of you. You can also submit a prayer request on the website at grantspathcsl.org. We are dedicated to your confidentiality and healing. If you are in need of prayer and spiritual support, please contact one of us for a short affirmative prayer after our service today. Or you can contact one of us for a professional practitioner session. Our phone numbers are in the program and on our website. Whether you have an issue to resolve or you just want to experience more blessings in your life, we are here for you, so please reach out. Today, our table practitioner is Deborah Perdue, and she is holding the high watch for us. Um, if you are in need of prayer after the service, you can go back and uh, either get prayer with Deborah, or she can guide you to one of those practitioners that are available to pray with you. And I would like to thank Deborah today for our flowers as well. They are beautiful. Thank you. And do we have any first timers in the group today? Do we have anybody who's here visiting us for the first time? We have a gift we would like to offer to you. Raise a hand. Welcome. We are so glad to have you here. All right. And just a little housekeeping a reminder to please uh, silence or turn off your cell phones. Thank you. And please join me in reading today's prayer together. Recognizing that all is one, I recenter myself in the needed and bask in serenity and wisdom, and so it is. So please remain seated as we sing, I am left. <laughs> Especially for the music, for the person, the mic, you can hear it. The music is terrible. 
So are you a wise warrior? Do you look at the world and ask, will this world ever change? Or do you look at the world and ask, what can I do to change this world? I found a wonderful article today in the Science of Mind uh, magazine in the daily readings for July 17th that I'd like to share with you guys today. When I hear of the challenges of the world, we might be tempted to feel intensely critical and judgmental or even disconnected. How do we find the balance of participating in a country or city we live in from a place of centeredness? It seems that we often underestimate the contributions we can make that are uniquely ours to make. Some of us feel guided to be out marching or working with our governmental leaders. Some of us feel called to continue to light our lamp of prayerfulness on behalf of the issues of the world. Some of us do both. The key is to discover what is ours to do and then do this from a centered place. This means that jumping up angrily and reacting to things and people may not ultimately serve our purpose. Ignoring the problems of the world also may not ultimately serve that purpose. How do we do things we do, how we do things we do contributes greatly to how we feel as we do them and to the outcome we experience. We also must find peace in allowing others to follow their own guidance and be mindful of a tendency to project into others how they should respond as citizens. The highest and best action for all beings is to follow the inner guidance in every decision. We must do what we are called to do, and we must celebrate and allow all other beings to do what they are called to do or not to do. So to quote Ernest Holmes, you are each a law unto yourself. Become unto yourselves a law of happiness, a law of peace, a law of health, life, love, truth, and beauty. And go forth to radiate that which you feel yourself to be. It is only self, it is the only salvation that will ever come to this world. So I invite you now to just take a few moments to go within to that inner warrior and connect with that wise one and ask the question, what is mine to do today? Let's just spend a few moments in the silence and I'll call you back for this time. As we come back together, I know there is only one of us here. There's one mind expressing through each of us as unique individuals. And I know that this opportunity to come together and receive this divinely guided message is a blessing for us all. And it brings great joy and gratitude into my heart. And I extend that joy and gratitude right back out into my heart. And I fully release this to yeah. the universal loving law that is always open, receiving, and always says yes. 
Just the one. Oh. We're going to have some this together. They say this. Yes. <laughs> oh, we are going to have some very special music from our wonderful now music crew here, and then we will have a wonderful message from Reverend Steve. Um, in the grounds, has been us with having an old fat way to eat it with a bad hand, a bad hand. They said no. So I ordered him up in that hat for a second drink. Did you? <laughs> and then I had one. Yeah. I didn't have one. Oh, really? Just that one. Uh, the, uh, they made it. When we move into passing here, the song of love is hard to hear. Till everything's so hard. Okay, I was trying to figure out how old that book is. I see. John Martin just came up. He's just using his driver's car. So long is there a voice in your the morning of wings in the rising of the wind at night, the breaking of the ocean wind, the call of the heart. The sound of every Well, good morning. I am absolutely delighted and amazed to find myself standing here this morning, <laughs> which was not in the plan just a few days ago. <laughs> I uh, left my home uh, in Taos, New Mexico on a trip out west to come to Asilomar for a couple of days to play some music. First stopping in San Francisco at the Unitarian Church there downtown last Sunday. And after talking to uh, Reverend Stephen, 
realize my friend and I were traveling back to Portland together right about now. <laughs> so it's worked out. It's <laughs> I'd like to play a piece I composed. I'm going to dedicate this to Baron Stephen. It's a, uh, something from my own Celtic folk background, adding some Hindustani modalities that I love. <laughs> it's a commonplace, everyday, ordinary Celtic Hindustani fusion piece. <laughs> <laughs> but in Hindi, as I understand it, the word Bhagavan means of God. Hindustani language. And uh, so, Dedicating this to uh, Stephen, I'm going to. I have titled this piece the Bhagavan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank 
Thank you, Michael, and, and thank you, Lauren, for sharing the, the time unexpectedly with us, <laughs> and uh, aren't we blessed? <laughs> well, I just got back from a week at Asilomar, so I am, um, you know, I'm really not here. This is just a thing of your imagination. I'm off tripping the light fantastic somewhere, <laughs> but I had an incredible time. And my goal next year is to have 10 of us. That's we had, we had four, four, four people, five, from, five, five people five. from our current <laughs> congregation, including 15. me, at our, yeah, 10 or 15 people. So if you can find it, if you've got a year, start putting your pennies away. Uh, because it's an experience. And we have three registrations that we're going to be auctioning off at our fall auction. So maybe you just save for that and you'll get a really good deal on going to a Silomar. This was my 30th year. Wow. And I knew the first time I went to a Silomar what I was going to be doing every summer for the rest of my life. And here I am. 30 years. It's, it's written into my letter of call that, that I get to go to a cell yeah, yeah. Because, you know, your minister needs to be supercharged too, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get a lot from doing this, but I have to go out in the world to do some things to bring this to you. And I'm going to start with a story this morning. Um, our, our July theme is Speaking Truth to Circumstances, and today is The Wise Warrior. And this is a story by uh, Terry Dobson. The train clanked and rattled through the suburbs of Tokyo on a drowsy spring afternoon. Our car was completely empty uh, or comparatively uh, empty. A few housewives and their kids in tow, some old folks going shopping. I gazed absently at the drab houses and dusty hedgerows. At one station, the door opened and suddenly the afternoon quiet was sh shattered by a, a man bellowing violently, incomprehensible curses. The man staggered into our car. He wore laborers' clothes, and he was big, and he was drunk, and he was dirty. He was screaming. He swung at a woman holding a baby. The blow almost sent her spinning into the laps of an elderly couple. It was a miracle that she was unharmed. Terrified, the couple jumped up and scrambled into the other end of the car. The laborer aimed a kick 
at our re at the retire uh, retreating back of an older woman, but missed as she scuttled off to safety. This so enraged the drunk that he grabbed the a metal pole in the center of the car and tried to wrench it out of its stanchion. I could see that on his hands was a cut and he was bleeding. The train lurched ahead, the passengers frozen in fear, and I stood up. I was a young man then, some 20 years ago, and in pretty good shape. I'd been putting in a solid eight hours of keto training nearly every day for the past three years. I liked to throw and grapple. I thought I was tough. Trouble was, my martial arts skill was untested in actual combat. As students of Aikido, we are not allowed to fight. Aikido, my teacher said again and again, is the art of reconciliation. Whoever has the mind to fight has broken his connection with the universe. Whoever has the mind to fight has broken his connection with the universe. Think about that next time. If you're trying to dominate people, you will already have been defeated. We study how to resolve conflict, not how to start it. I listened to his words. I tried hard. I even went so far as to cross the street to avoid um, the pinball punks who lounged around the train stations. My forbordance exalted me. I felt both tough and holy in my heart. However, I wanted an absolute legitimate opportunity whereby I might save the innocent by destroying the guilty. This is it, I said to myself, getting to my feet. People are in danger, and if I don't do something fast, they'll probably get hurt. Seeing me stand up, the drunk, and the drunk recognized a chance to focus his rage. Ah, he roared, a foreigner, you need a lesson in Japanese manners. I held on tightly to the commuter strap overhead and gave him a slow look of disgust and dismissal. I planned to take this turkey apart, but he had to make the first move. I wanted him mad, so I pursed my lips and blew him an innocent kiss. <laughs> All right, he hollered. You're going to get a lesson. He gathered himself to rush towards me. A split second before he could move, Solo <laughs> called out, Hey! It was ear splitting. I remember the strangely joyous lilt quality of it, as though you and a friend had been searching delightedly for something and suddenly stumbled upon it. Hey! I wheeled to my left. The drunk spun to his right. We both stared down a little old Japanese. He must have been well into his seventies. His this tiny, tiny gentleman sitting there, immaculate in his kimono. He took notice of me, but beamed delightedly at the laborer, as though he had a most important, most welcome secret to share. Come here, the old man said in an easy vernacular, be beckoning to the drunk. Come here and talk with me. He waved his hand lightly. The big man followed as if on a string. He planted his feet belligerently in front of the old man and roared about above the clanking of the wheels of the train. Why the hell should I talk to you? The drunk, now in his craziness, came up to him. If his elbows moved so that as if a millimeter, I'd drop him to his socks. <laughs> the old man continued to beam at the laborer. What you been drinking? <laughs> he asked. 
his eyes sparkling with interest. I've been drinking sake. The laborer bellowed back, and it's none of your business. Flecks of spit splattered on the old man. Okay, that's wonderful, the old man said. Absolutely wonderful. You see, I love sake too. Every night, me and my wife, she's 76, you know, and we warm up a little bottle of sake and we take it into the garden and we sit on an old wooden bench. We watch the sun go down and we look to see how our persimmon tree is doing. My great grandfather planted that tree and we worry about whether it, it will recover from the ice storms that we had last winter. Our tree has been doing better than I expected, though, especially when you consider the poor quality of the soil. <laughs> it is gratifying to watch when we take our sake and go out and enjoy the evening, even when it rains. <laughs> he looked up at the laborer with twinkling eyes. <laughs> As he struggled to follow the old man's conversation, <laughs> the trunk's face began to soften. His fist slowly unclenched. Yeah, he said, I love persimmons too. His voice trailed off. Yes, the old man smiling. And I'm sure you have a wonderful wife. No, replied the laborer. My wife died. Very gently swaying with the motion of the train, the big man began to sob. I don't got no wife. I don't got no home, and I don't got no job. I'm so ashamed of myself. Tears rolled down his cheek as he, he spasmed from his crying, and his spirit rippled through his body. Now it was my turn, standing there in well-scrubbed youthful innocence, my take in this world, safe for democracy, righteousness, I suddenly felt dirtier than he was. <laughs> then the train arrived at my stop. As the doors opened, I heard the old man clucking sympathetically. My, my, he said, that is a difficult predicament indeed. Sit down here and tell me all about it. I turned my head for one last look. The laborer was sprawled on the seat, his head in the old man's lap. The old man was softly stroking the filthy matted hair. As the train pulled away, I sat down on the bench. What I had wanted to do with muscle had been accomplished with kind words. I had just seen Aikido tried in combat. And the essence of it was love. I would have to practice the art with an entirely different spirit. It would be a long time before I could speak about the resolution of conflict. Mm -hmm. That's by Terry Dobson. Ooh, that's wow. awesome. That's, that's a I years ago, but it's so about being a wise warrior. I love that part. The minute that you have wanted to fight, you have lost the fight. That's the beauty in not having to fight because this old man disarmed him just by listening and starting a conversation because that's all we need to do is start a conversation, understand people. What I, what I learned this week is how to feedback on life <laughs> is that we need to forgive ourselves for not understanding someone else. And it's okay. I could understand how you would not understand a situation if you haven't thought it all the way through. Let's forgive ourselves and be peaceful, wise warriors, right? Let's put down the knife. Let's put down the gun. Let's put down our arms and open our arms to love. Now for my talk. <laughs> the wise warrior is focused and does not get 
ensnarled by smallness. They're going for greatness, like the well-trained martial artists. When the wise warrior walks into the bar of life, no one picks a fight with them. Their presence is enough. Plotinus, the Greek philosopher, said, I do not argue, I contemplate. And as I contemplate, I let the seeds of thought fall into the mirror of my mind, which then becomes the mirror of matter. The way of the unpeaceful warrior, the unwise warrior, then struggles in a battle with themselves, fighting every windmill that comes along. You ever know people like that? They're just looking for a fight. They just, they'll, they'll fight with themselves if they could, because they want that energy of the fight. Sometimes they do fight themselves. That's what addiction's all about, but that's another topic. <laughs> the wise warrior, on the other, other hand, is already anchored in peace and poised. They are focused on what needs to happen without needing to fight. They start with a solution in mind. They recognize that all is one, not just one, but the fight is already won because there is no fight. If you can disarm someone, there is no fight. They are focused on what needs to happen without needing to fight. They recognize that everything is one already. All they bring is the recentering into that oneness. We need to just recenter ourselves. Maybe step away from the situation before responding. You know, we so want to be in their face, don't we? We so want to teach them truth. <laughs> but if they're not open enough to receive it, then we're wasting our breath and their time. You know, we don't try to teach pigs to sing because it wastes our time and annoys the pig, <laughs> right? So maybe stepping away for a moment and saying, you know, is this a sword that I want to die on? Mm, I think not, not today. Dr. Holmes wrote, one, alone in consciousness with the infinite, infinite constitutes a complete majority. We can all perceive many things that the world needs to change, but the out there is always a reflection of the in here. There's no out there out there. It's all right here where we are, whether individually or collectively. Einstein reminds us we can't solve a challenge at the level of the consciousness that created it. We must move out of the challenge energy and into the resolution energy. We can do that by taking that moment before we speak, before we press send, before we step into something that we're not prepared to deal with. So we must change our thinking, our consciousness, our perspective, our beingness, if we want to change the world. We have to change who we are. Changing the world is like if my tie is crooked and I look in the mirror and I grab for the mirror to fix my tie. No, I, I grab here to fix my tie because it's happening here, not in the mirror. And Wayne Gaines advises us to find our divine purpose by looking carefully at what the world is before us, what feel that we feel needs transforming. What is yours to do? Something that would be fun for us to get involved with repairing, shifting, reconstructing, fixing, or perfecting. Notice the word fun. The spiritual quality, quality of joy. If we bring a consciousness of martyrdom and sacrifice, 
we will color what shows up. This is quantum physics. It's always, every situation is reacting because of the consciousness we hold. When we change our consciousness, the world changes. And next, we make a 100% commitment to the healing of a situation. We bring the principles of being spiritual beings, consciously manifesting something fresh and new. Which brings me to my three talking points. <coughs> First, the quote by Plotinus gives us a path to follow. I don't argue, I contemplate. Troer tells us that the universe creates by contemplation, and so do we. The collective consciousness has taught us to jump up and down, yelling and screaming, to communicate our outrage over situations, to try and change the circumstances. But you get more bees with honey. Relax. Take that moment. Take a step back and look at what's really going on. While this may feel very righteous, it is proven largely ineffective at creating real lasting change. Change needs to be manifest in the outer, but it begins in the inner. It begins where we are in consciousness. This is why we should wake up in prayer, in alignment, so that whatever happens after our morning prayer is part of the prayer. It's part of the experience. It's like, you know, you ever gotten up on the wrong side of the bed? We all have. So go back to bed. <laughs> maybe you want to stay there a little while. Maybe, maybe you want to spend the night there again. <laughs> you ever had days where you felt it was better if I just didn't get out of bed? <laughs> just go back to bed and see what happens. You know, as good religious scientists, we know that there is only one power and that behind and within all circumstances, no matter how challengingly ugly they may look, there is a divine presence. But we need to get there. We need to find that divine presence in every situation. When we commit to seeing things differently, we create a different experience. The wise warrior takes a step back and recenters themselves prior to entering any fray. This gives us an opportunity to look past the appearance of things and see the core reality that is present. And it's only then that we can coax it forward, midwifing it into existence and shift the situation, usually without any bloodshed. Instead of getting angry over situations, ask, what do I need to know here? What needs to be known here instead? What is spirit's highest idea of this? And then contemplate instead of arguing. Number two, in his book, You Can See Change in the World, Amin Motawi, who also wrote the book, Creating the World That Works for All, invites us to follow a path. The path is an invitation to change how we see the world. We are invited to see the intrinsic worth of every person we encounter. This alone shifts our interpersonal relationships and the world is made of relationships. Then he invites us to focus on several principles. Focus not on how little time we have, but on how to make the most of the time we do have with every person. Focus not on what you see on the outside of a person, but on the inside, within them. See both the pain and the potential within. Focus not on what's wrong with a person, but on what makes them right. See their strengths within their weaknesses. We are invited to become the change we want to see in the world. It may seem like a small thing in the face of what happens to the overwhelming changes, but it's a big thing. 
when it's a little thing that's bugged you for so long and you finally have a healing, you've released the energy around it. Yet every change starts small and then grows. Think of seeds thrown out by various plants. Jesus used the example of the mustard seed, how small it is. A few tiny plants can soon occupy a whole hillside. We know that we are one and all interconnected. Thus, seeing the intrinsic worth of each person can create a change that can snowball into a powerful energy of peace and force. Thirdly, a wise warrior knows that it is not their power that creates real change. In third state consciousness, we recognize that we are co-creators with the infinite. We are as the infinite. We are the infinite. We've never not been it. We just act differently. We open to life happening through us. We remember that we are directing that power and that that power is greater than all the stuff in the world. There's an old saying, I stopped telling God how big my problems are and started telling my problems how big my God is. <laughs> Shift in perspective. When we stand as these wise warriors, also known as practitioners of truth, the infinite power of good is it can be just something we talk about, or it can be something that we do in our life. But we must be the power of love, harmony, and unity in every situation. The good news is that's who we already really are. We don't have to become something. We don't have to have the 2.0 download to be able to access it. It was already installed in your being upon entry. So it's not really becoming something that we aren't, but unbecoming who we aren't really. And spreading that light that we really are and knowing by sharing it, we will remind other, others of their life, ultimately the love that we all are together. This Reunion with the divine, God, source energy, goddess. You get to make it. That's your business. And as we become one and remember who we are, we activate that love. That's who we're really seeking to be. Some of us may have forgotten and become monsters. That's okay. You can play that part if you want. But we get tired. Beneath the scary outer layer is the divine waiting to be accessed. Can we shift our focus and let go of running around in anger and see the truth, the intrinsic value of each and every person? So in conclusion, we can no longer hide in our own little caves of safety. This world is too interconnected in form, mirroring its interconnectedness. We are all being God in form. It can be no other way. But we each have to change. I want everything to be different, but don't change anything in my life. I don't like change. I don't do change very well. But I want everything to change. <laughs> Like the bamboo that takes years of tiny growth before it bursts forth in massive growth, our willingness to be agents of spirit, wise warriors, practitioners of truth, creates this change. It may not happen as fast as we want. I'm always looking at the TV thinking that we should be further along than this. <laughs> but we are where we are. This is where we are. The healing is right where we are. 
it may not happen fast as our instant gratification egos want, but it is happening. Our only question is, will we take up the cause and be participants in the evolutionary change that's being called forth? Have you felt the change that's going on? Nobody just means? I think everybody is feeling it to some extent. Some are wrestling with it. Some are denying it. Some are whistling past the graveyard. Or will we pretend that there's something we can do? We have the tools to change. We have principles and practices and methods which equip us to be mighty warriors who never need to go to war again. So it is. Time for us to follow our teaching and go within. Let's take a moment and just remember who we are. I invite you to bring to the forefront of your consciousness what you choose to believe or, or give name to this energy, this power, this love that is breathing your body, that is beating your heart. Something powerful is moving through each one. And as we give it our attention, we pull our attention away from whatever our challenge was. We focus on the solution, on the healing, on the revealing of truth. We begin to relax, giving a space just an extra moment, leaving the window open an inch for a new idea to blow in, leaves a soft space within us where the healing can begin. Or healing is happening right here and right now. I may not know what you're walking through right now, but I know that the power that created each one of us knows and has a solution. As we allow that solution to be known, sending all the right cells in the body to all the right places for perfect healing, for sending all the right ideas and connections and genius to all the right places in our thinking, to allow a divine resolution to be made manifest. We are all healing. We are all getting better and better because we know that the way of the peaceful warrior is peace. So we give great thanks as our hearts overflow with the divinity of the universe. Something is healing. Something is happening. And it is you. So we let go. We let go and let God be God in us, as us. We release this word directly into the living, loving law of mind where it is already healed. It is already done. And we are blessed as we affirm this together by saying, now it's time for our healing ideas about sharing prosperity affirmation and it, please recite this with me as your hand on your heart with joy, joy and peace i gladly give to the center
So I can swap my CD of the Arduino. Mm -hmm.
spiritual energy these tithes and gifts have been collected. They're evidence of our faith, our belief, and our ability to manifest in this world of form. They do good work in the world, blessing the giver and the receiver, and allowing this, the Grants Pass Center for Spiritual Living, to be open and available to those who are choosing to remember who they are, and even for those who may not know it yet. And for that, this community thrives with love, thrives with power, thrives with spiritual love. And it is good and very good. And so it is. Okay, it's time for our final song. I believe we're going to do the peace song. We are. Okay, well, stand up and let's sing the peace song. Thank you. 